So the Itswana University of Technology and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research are establishing a cannabis research hub to support the medical cannabis industry. Let's get you more on this initiative. We're joined by Professor David Katerere, chairperson for the Pharmaceutical and Biotech Advancement Center in Africa at TUT. Thank you very much, Prof, for availing yourself uh, this afternoon. So what do we need to understand about this hub and what will make it so important? Well, so it's really a uh, coming together of uh, two strong partners. So TUT has a lot of expertise in the pharmaceutical sciences. And then CSIR has over the years built, um, you know, quite a strong infrastructure space around assisting um, entrepreneurs. And therefore, we thought that we would actually come together and set up this hub. And the hub will be really aiming at um, uh, assisting entrepreneurs, de-risking them by providing a contract uh, extraction facility, but also conducting research. Hmm. You speak of uh, de-risking them. Um, what are some of the barriers uh, to entry when we talk about this space in South Africa? Yeah, there are quite a lot. So the first one is a policy barrier. The licenses themselves are uh, not that expensive, but then entering the space, you're looking at least um, at about 15 to 30 million rand uh, because you almost, for medical cannabis, you actually have to have a facility before you are licensed. So that's the one thing. And uh, a huge amount of that money goes into um, extraction equipment. So at the moment, you find that we are exporting a lot of raw product into the world market, whereas we could actually be beneficiating that product by extracting it. But because the extraction equipment is expensive, it requires specialized uh, uh, operators, then you know we miss out on the opportunity of value adding. And therefore, this center is really aimed at taking that pain away and providing such a service. Hmm. Prof, you mentioned uh, the policy barriers, right? So. You've got some officials in South Africa that actually believe that somebody with a tattoo is a gangster. So one wonders what kind of conversations are being had about this particular industry uh, because we do know the benefits that it will have for unlocking uh, the economy in South Africa. So what kind of conversations are being had like with institutions like yourselves rather and, and, and policy makers? Mm -hmm. Well, look, uh, so we are mainly looking that the thing with cannabis is there are almost three sides to it, right? So there's um, the industrial side to it, which is uh, the industrial hemp side. Uh, and these are products that can be used for uh, fabric, for, you know, car seats, all sorts of things. And that's controlled at the moment by the Department of Agriculture. And then there's a recreational side to it, which maybe you might be referring to. Um, and that's still quite unclear at the moment. Uh, then we are really focusing on medical cannabis. And medical cannabis is a source of uh, products that go into the pharmaceutical value chain. Uh, it's uh, used for ma mainly cancer pain and uh, even arthritic pain. And there are at the moment over 151 studies going on globally around um, medical use of cannabis. Hmm. Uh, and I don't think there's uh, too much controversy around that. Sure. Uh, if we delay, yeah, so we're actually uh, not creating access to patients if we delay uh, processes that facilitate, um, you know, the use of such a medicine. Why is it taking us so long? You speak of the benefits for maybe for cancer patients as just one example. Do we not run the risk of getting left behind? Many countries are far ahead where this is concerned. Yes, uh, we definitely do. And that's actually why we set up this hub, because uh, this hub will not just service um, South Africa, by the way. It's a regional hub. So already we are getting inquiries from other countries in the region who would like to, to be able to use this hub. Um, that's exactly the thinking, to say that we cannot be left behind in this um, you know, new industry, as it were. Mm. Uh, 
are we going to be, um, you speak of it being a regional hub, but I do wonder what the situation looks like for the rest of the continent. I know we're not a country and there's so many role players involved, but um, would it not benefit us to work together? Uh, yes, so from a research perspective, we are definitely working together. I've just come back from a tour of three countries. So at the moment, the leading lights are Lesotho, uh, mm -hmm. South Africa, Zimbabwe, and, and Malawi. Um, then, of course, you've got Rwanda, which also has uh, come on board. But, but really, there's, Southern Africa is really um, sort of moving ahead of the pack. And, and therefore, there are lots of complementarities. We can also learn a lot from each other from a policy perspective. And then, of course, from a market perspective. I think the sad thing at the moment is that uh, all our policies are outward looking. So we are licensing people to export this product, right? And I said, as I said, most of it is being pro um, exported in raw form. So we're not adding value on the one thing, on the one hand, but the, on the other hand, uh, you know, African patients are also not having access to these products because we are saying we are growing cannabis, medical cannabis for export purposes. So one of the changes that needs to take place in the policy is actually allowing growers to service local markets. Hmm. That is, yeah, that is such a curious decision on our part, but um, thank you very much. That's all we can afford in terms of time. Professor David Katerere, Chairperson uh, for Pharmaceutical and Biotech Advancement in Africa at the Tswane University of Technology.